We'll start with the Challenger Series finals tonight. Hitton Patel in action. He's got a brilliant matchup against Lewis Roberts. Two players who've not been this far in the competition already. A win might catapult them into the pro rankings. Still so much to play for, but for these two, what a moment for them. It's absolutely huge. I don't think either of them probably came here this weekend expecting to get this deep. They've, you know, with, with Hitton, he's, he's been knocking on the door this year, but hasn't quite reached the heights that he has here. Lewis, it's almost a bit more of a free roll but you're absolutely right for me. The challengers, it is almost more riding on it for the challengers than the pros. We talk a lot about the top 16 for the pros, the champion of champions, but for the challengers, it's finishing in that top eight. The winner of this match tonight will have a good chance of being pro next season, which is absolutely huge. They'll also get a place in the champion of champions as well. So, so much to play for for these guys. Really cannot wait to get going. Let's get them out here on the table. Then before we do that, I did catch up with both Lewis and Hitton a little bit earlier. It's a big congratulations, Challenger Series finalist. You've had an amazing run through this competition. How have you found this weekend? Yeah, I found it great, to be honest. Um, started off slow, um, played my way into the tournament, got some confidence going. And, yeah, it's pretty good, to be honest. I yeah, found some form near, near the end as well. You've been here every weekend in the Challenger Series. You, you know how tough it is, how deep the field is. and yeah. Not gone further than the last 16 so far. Here you are in a final. What, was, what a testament that is to how well you've been playing all weekend. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great field out there, to be honest. Um, I've got to the last 16 before. Any, any match you play, it's, it's, it's difficult, wherever you're playing. Um, you need a bit of luck, break well and stuff, you know. And I think I've had a bit of luck going my way this, 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 um, this weekend so far. How about tonight? Big match, live on the telly, Saturday night prime time. There's going to be a buzzing atmosphere out there as well. I'm actually just looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to going out there and playing again out there. I've played before and hopefully I'll continue my form tonight. I wanted to ask as well, big weekend today, of course, what with the, the final events of the year, what would potential pro status mean to you? You've been in this game a long time, I know. You want to get on board that ship for 2022, don't you? Yeah, I was thinking about that um, and I thought I've got to win the tournament to, to, if, to get into the pros, but I didn't think I'd be in this position right now, to be honest, and um, hopefully I can make that pro status, to be honest, uh, I wish you all the very best luck, mate. Thank you. Cheers. Well, Lewis, a huge congratulations on making a Challenger Series final. Only a, your second weekend on the Challenger Series and you had a fantastic run. How, how have you found it so far? Yeah, it's been good. I've had a good weekend, so I, I, I can't complain. I've been playing some pretty good stuff and, um, yeah, hopefully I can carry that on into the final. A bit of a strange one because you've not been here every weekend. Has it been sort of a, a nice to play, nice to be a part of, take it almost a bit for fun? Can't really do that now. You're this far in, hey? Yeah, no, no, not now. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't join the tour this year. Um, I, I sort of got in a couple of events, obviously uh, the second one and and, and this weekend. Um, and yeah, it was just, to, it was just to, to play, really, no expectations. Um, I didn't do any much practice for the for the last weekend I was in, and I've I've done a few weeks for this one. Um, I, I'm signed up for the tour next year, so hopefully I'll, uh, I'll you know use this as a bit of a springboard for next year and, and hopefully pick up some more results next season. Well, if the wind comes tonight, of course, you may not need that. It's, it's a big carrot, isn't it, dangling for you tonight? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, but I mean, it's, it's just another match. It's just, you know, hopefully we'll go out there and play OK. Um, obviously, I've not played in the arena, so that's going to be a good experience. Hopefully, I'll hold it together and hopefully nerves won't get the better of me. And, um, and hopefully, I'll play OK. Yeah. I wish you all the very best luck, mate. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. And Lewis Roberts going to be hitting with a 50 minute match on the timer. Oh, and Hitton will be gutted to screw straight into the middle pocket. Lewis Roberts, frustrating on that for Hitton. All the build up all that anticipation of what's to come, big final, and he goes straight in off on his first break. Not what he wanted at all. So it's going to be Lewis with the first opportunity, and Hitan actually hit that break so poorly that they haven't split open that well for Lewis here. Big challenge for Lewis in this match will be, I feel, the shot clock. He's not got a huge amount of experience with it. He's He's been around a, a little while in terms of of holding a queue, we've got a lot of experience in, in a, well, a couple of key sports really. But as he spoke to us in his interview there, he, he almost viewed these Challenger Series in 2021 as a bit of a free hit really, a bit of a chance to, to have a bit of a go and see how he did. 
I don't think at any point did he expect to be here right now. But now you're here. I mean, it's there to be won. Oh, absolutely. And with all all that comes with this match, you know, winning this match, we talked about it there. Champion of Champions next week, the winner will be in potentially, there'll be pro status for next year. Obviously, a lot's got to happen going in the rankings. There's one more tournament left to play and that will end tomorrow. But yeah, absolutely so much to play for. Uh, first chance did not go the way Lewis wanted. He wanted to just open up the yellow and red that are together on that uh, by his hand now and wasn't able to do so. So he's just keeping it tight. Hasn't left anything here for Hiten to go at. Nice decision that as well, because it would be very easy to sort of play yourself into a fair bit of trouble with the, with the frame looking like this. Bit of adrenaline, just chase a finish that isn't really on. Yeah, I think we get lulled into a bit of a false sense of security as well, watching the great players play match after match, and it always seems like they're taking finish after finish out, but sometimes they're just not there, and you have to pull back, be a little bit more patient, and especially with it being the first frame of the match, you'll wait for the right opportunity. It's not exactly the safety that Lewis was trying to play, but he knew he wasn't ever going to really leave a huge amount. Having said that, though, what both these players would give for a fairly routine-looking finish, a chance to get the Q arm going, because the experienced players, there is absolutely no doubt there will be some jangles out there tonight. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. But the problem with this frame is the player that takes on the finish has every chance to leave their opponent with that wide open chance because the player that goes for these isn't going to be certain of making them. Lewis could go for this red to the bottom left. He's got a sight to it. I think it's the only he ball might, he can see. He might even have an angle to go into the yellow and the red. Oh, he's tried. Second time he's tried to move that ball. Second time it's not landed. And he's not got another pot on. And it's going to be harder to find a good safety now. The safeties he was playing in the bottom left-hand corner of the table were fairly uh, simple to, to lay. This one, not so easy. And these yellows, the more reds come off the table, start to look a little bit more open. Probably just brush off these reds and leave the cubals somewhere right at the top of the table. Oh, he's played for the plant into the middle pocket. Oh, I tell you what, Lewis Roberts, what a shot that is. What a pick out that is. Ooh. This is brilliant. This is brilliant, but he is now chasing the finish. So you can see he's definitely, he wants to be aggressive here. He wants to get out now, but this isn't easy at all still. Still got the same problem ball. He might need to pull out another one. I just oh. wonder if that double goes. You do wonder, don't you? He's got a line to it now. Just caught a glimpse there in the crowd of Lewis's partner, Trish, who we've seen plenty of times on the Pro Series so far this year. One of the ultimate pool refs. Brilliant one at that. Double is there. Oh, this would be a naughty little finish if Lewis Roberts can take these out. He's still just about on, but this... It's all going to come down to one very good shot. He's already made a couple. Yeah, red right into the top right-hand corner. The cue ball is going into the yellow and the eight ball. Can he nudge it onto a position where he can pot it? Looks like he's going to catch the join of the, the yellow and the eight ball with a natural shot. Oh, not quite there. And in off to boot. The good news is at least the red's gone and made one of the yellows awkward. It's a tough one. If he was just trying to pop that ball, I'd expect him to make it. The problem was he was had so much focus on, on developing the eight ball in the same shot. Amazing how easy it is to take your eye off a pot like that. So cue ball in hand for Hitton Patel. Looking for an angle where he can go into the yellow and red that are together. Hitton's so, so experienced. Nose is... Natural angles. That'll do. His next shot isn't the easiest. That's just the only problem. Just put himself under a shade of pressure here. 
not the worst choice for playing a safety. The safety, there's a big area in the bottom of the table where he can just leave the cue ball and leave nothing on. And that's what he's going to play. Has he gone too far to the right? I think he's okay. Yeah, he's done well. Well, we know how slightly these cushions have been playing all weekend. Just wonder if Lewis has got a fairly smooth one cushion here and he might go close to making it. Oh, I tell you what. That was close. He wasn't far off making that. He really wasn't. But now it is. Yeah, no, it now it, it's, it's got to be hitting here, hasn't it? This is. It feels already seven minutes into the match, still zeros on the scoreboard. It feels like a big frame to win, what with both having a chance at the table. You see there, he was not far away from nudging that right close to that corner pocket. That was the danger of playing safe for hits, and that's always the danger of playing safe against these players when you've. And you leave even half a chance. We'll give a pretty good go at taking it out. Yeah, you're always fearing the worst in that sort of situation. I was speaking to Hitton earlier, and he was hoping that his experience on this table would help him out a little bit tonight. He's had appearances, three appearances, in fact, on Monday nights on Free Sports. He was in the Champions League, the Masters, and the Pairs Cup, where he partnered Lac Badan in one of the early weeks of the tournament. Not had a huge amount of success on Monday nights. This would be the biggest win we've seen from him in a little while. This 1-0 then for Hitton Patel. There we go, one zip to Hitton. Plenty of time left in this match, but as I say, that frame does just feel quite a big one. I'll mention the experience of Hitton Patel. He's been around an awful long time. Been playing this game, he reckons, 30, 40 years at a pretty high level. He was at a pretty high level when the sport was at its pretty high level as well. In that golden era, of sort of the mid-2000s, he was right in amongst it, ranked seventh on the WPF. He's a World Team Championship semi-finalist with India. A couple of UK Tour semi-finals as well. 26th ranked on the Challengers coming into this event. You can see the furthest he'd got was a couple of last 16 rounds in uh, the first event and I think the fourth event there as well. What that tells you as a player of Hitton's quality, not even making a quarter final in, in six attempts, shows you just how difficult this series is to win on. Yeah, it's incredible. It's such a, such a deep field for the challenge. It's going to be even deeper in 2022 as well. But Hitan, yeah, he's not shown the form this year that he would have wanted, which is, he almost sounded a bit shocked in his interview when he was sort of realised he was in the final and, and what might come with it. Has to remind himself how good a player he is, though. I love that interview as well, as we see Lewis break dry and give Hitton first go at these, where he said, you know, I, I sort of considered the, you know, the, what I'd have to do to, to get that pro ranking. I sort of realised I'd probably have to win an event, so didn't really think too much about it but he's had an incredible run he's he's arguably been the form player in the tournament and that might seem like an obvious thing to say he's in the final but that doesn't always work out you can be the form player in the tournament and then run into a roadblock in the quarters and all of a sudden everyone's pretty relieved you're out hitton has been superb all the way through he's taking down some big big players exactly well let's just have a quick look even at the semi-finals and quarterfinals played craig waddingham who is you know probably the best player within the Challenger Series, one of the best players in the world, 6-5 uh, in the semi-finals, and then took down the Challenger number one, Dan Eaton-Lee, 6-2 in the quarter-finals. I mean, it doesn't get any tougher than that as a back-to-back -back rounds. It really is a, a tough run for Hitan. Yeah, and I think uh, if you go back as far as the last 32, he gave Toby Bolt, who's a fantastic player, a, a, you know, a sick snill whacking. He's been playing absolutely superbly. It's hitting all the way through. That pot, though, didn't find its mark, and now... Can Lewis Roberts start to make some inroads in this final? I think he was playing on the yellow, the other side of the red that he's nearest to now. Whether he was playing into the red or whether he was just trying to come back a couple of rolls less, I don't know. But I think that's the ball he was playing on. Similar to the, the previous frame for Lewis, it's 
an awkward looking finish. Doesn't have quite as many problems as the previous, but it's not nice. Sometimes you're, you're out there and you almost feel forced into taking on these sort of finishes and you need to be very precise, pick a very good route to work your way around. Eight ball is a big problem. I'm not sure, well, it definitely doesn't go to either corner pocket, whether it goes to both or either of the middles. It must go to one of them, I think. The one he's nearest to now does go to bottom left. He has come up a little bit too far. He would love to have been straight or just low on it. Natural angles taking him down towards the bottom right-hand pocket. Well, Lewis Roberts will be really well supported tonight. That's OK, played the cue ball first. He's well supported. Steve Singh, I can see in the crowds. John Rowe there as well, all from that same sort of neck of the woods. And will be, dare say, a few big names watching tonight at home as well. Lewis, one of the, the main men at Stanford Cue Makers. Got some relatively well-known clients there. <laughs> one or two. <laughs> Likes of Mark Selby, Ding Jun Wei, Gareth Potts, who he's been arguably Lewis's biggest fan in, in recent months, the work that he's done to that queue. Yeah, he's been working Lewis hard over the last couple of months since he rejoined the ball tour. But, but he's a fine player in his own right, Lewis Roberts. You were watching him a little bit earlier on and you are just in awe of how smooth the queue action was. Yeah, I actually saw him Thursday night having a, a couple of hours with Gareth Potts in practice and he, he just looked really smooth and really controlled. The queue action looks lovely. Declan Brennan and Sean Chipperfield there having a little watch as well. Potentially eyeing up some of their competition for next year. <laughs> Maybe. Big shot here. Cue ball's got to go and cannon the red and the eight ball as well. We well, got the cannon when well, he didn't make the ball. I don't think he'd have had too easy a shot on the eight ball ultimately as well. So once again, similar story to the first frame. Lewis Roberts does quite a lot of hard work without really managing to reap the rewards. Both the finishes that Lewis have take, has taken on have been very, very tricky. Very awkward to negotiate the cue ball. Well, I'm pretty sure Hitton would have been wanting to skill shot that to keep on the table. Because as we saw, this is, this is always a danger when you bring a player back to the table and the hit of the ball isn't that difficult. This could go close to a pocket. I'll tell you what, if you'd have played that at full pace, that looks like right on line for that corner pocket, but it is hitting it will come back. Yeah, you are always asking for trouble, especially when you give a player, a decent quality player, a one-cushion escape from a snooker on the eight ball. You just fancy them to make it. But for Hiten, he's played the odds, and they have worked in his favour, and for the second consecutive frame, he has a chance an open layout to, to run out, get himself a 2-0 lead. It is amazing, actually, that lots talked about with the break, about getting the first opportunity in frames, but sometimes you get first opportunity, you almost feel obliged to go for the finish. If you don't get it, you just make the game easy for your opponent. And that's, that's what's happened here in, in the opening two frames. Itan Patel could take these out in a whole host of different ways. problems at all the whole way through this visit for his end just nice and smooth often the way when all the yellows are out the way we mentioned this didn't we at the at the start of the match these are the visits that you want in the early going when you are a bit nervous and a bit edgy 
Smooth and simple for Hitton Patel, who goes 2 0 up. So, still plenty of time left in this one, over half an hour to decide who will advance and be our Challenger Series 7 winner. We'll head to a quick break. Hitton Patel has the lead. Welcome back to the action from the Ultimate Pool Pro Series. We're with the challengers for our first match of the evening. Hitton Patel up against Lewis Roberts, and it's Hitton with the break, 2-0 to the good. He's given that plenty. Didn't catch his first break at all well, but the way that he caught those, that was an absolute peach, just what he'd have been after. First time in the match, Hitan's going to take the first chance on. One problem ball. Oh, oh my no. word. Complete miscue. A wry smile from Hitan. Looks like he's just playing the top spin. I just gets it all wrong. It's not a foul because colours weren't assigned, so it's not as though he missed his his red. The fact he hit a yellow is no problem. So it's actually ended up being Lewis taking on first chance essentially again. And this is the best one he's had. This is by far and away the best one he's had. This is the first one when he would say he would expect to make these. This is a, I never like saying routine, but this is certainly a, a good, good chance. Next shot's key for me. If he can get a nice angle on the next yellow with absolutely one in the middle of the table to be able to then get on the one on the, over the left centre pocket, it should be plain sailing. Ooh, he's just a about. Needed to miss the red. He's still on this. The cue ball is travelling. The good news for him is that there's no traffic in the way where he is travelling the cue ball. It's just down to pace control. As long as he stops it just before the right centre pocket, he'll be fine. Can he stop it? Can he stop it? That's OK. That's fine. Just slide by the red. That was a lovely little recovery shot. Yeah, I think he probably used that red as a bit of a guide, didn't he? Knew if he caught it a fall in the face, he'd be OK. He decided not to slide by the red, but play into it. But that's OK. Absolutely fine. And now just avoid the red, or if you're going into the red, then play it. You either play for the eight ball into the right centre pocket or the same pocket as the ball he's playing now. And he did play into it. So that little tracer left hand side he just put on it just to make sure he got the nice full ball contact into it rather than flicking it thinner and going awkward angle on this eight ball. And the eight ball is home. Lewis Roberts is on the board. Tough one for Hitton Patel to take that. He had first visit. He had a big chance to go 3-0 up there. But Lewis Roberts gets himself on the board and keeps himself right in the mix. Well, we chatted to Lewis earlier. Only one visit to the Challenger Series so far, and it wasn't a particularly successful one, only winning the one match. Worth pointing out as well, former snooker professional Lewis Roberts. Yeah, fantastic uh, cueist. We've already talked about his great cue action. Yeah, former snooker professional, now a, a cue maker. Uh, great to see that he's using a Stamford cue, uh, cue, by the way, as well. He <laughs> made it himself, I'm sure. Yeah, it was uh, towards the late 2000s that Lewis turned professional in the snooker. And had one event that I think he was telling me was that was televised, and he said it was pretty good practice because it was one of their shootout events. So similar sort of pace and speed to these ones where you don't get a second to think. Yeah, good preparation for when we get to the 15 seconds a shot portion of this match. Once again, Lewis will get first opportunity. And what's he going to be looking at here? Well, he is lining up the, the reds. You can make a case for both colour sets. The problem with the yellows is his first shot. He's going to take on the reds. The biggest problem he has with reds is the one he's queuing over now. You'd expect him to make it if he lands on it down the cushion. 
but he doesn't have a natural ball to land on it down the cushion. Needs it to pull up. Just. Yeah, just about. Not ideal, but not bad. Winner of this tournament will pocket a, a cool five grand. Which would be a very tidy prize for any Challenger Series player. But the opportunity to, to play in the big leagues next year is is a proper carrot as well as the the check. Yeah, when, when it comes to the money, it's incredible what's happened in a year. You know, the, the challengers are playing for for more than we used to play just to play for just a few years ago in in the pro events. Absolutely incredible what Ultimate Pool are doing. That's gone wrong. Needed the red to stay over the pocket. It's just gone into a really awkward position. Yeah, that plant was much more difficult than it actually looked because it wasn't just good enough to pot the ball. He had to pot it absolutely plumb to keep that red potable. He was playing on it. And this is now an awkward finish. Bullets in the double. Has he got the next shot? Well, does this red go? Does this? He's having. He's coming around to have a look now. This looks very tight. If it goes to the top right corner, then it's a horrible and a tough shot. But at least he has a shot. He can either drop it in and leave a thin cut on the red, or screw back. Well, the fact that he's not playing it tells me it probably can't go. Well, the angle there tells it. He, it probably does slide in. You have to hit brush the cushion on the way down. But he's played up for the double. And he's not on it. And that will be, you'd imagine, curtains for this visit. There's always the danger with taking that shot first. Could he get on this red better? Because he landed what seemed to be pretty much straight on it down the rail. This is tough. Can he do anything that enables him to come back to the table? Well, maybe. It's, it's about probably as good a result as he could have hoped for. Yeah, it's, it's you, in this sort of situation, you just keep yourself in the frame absolutely as long as you possibly can. Float that one towards the top corner pocket. Well, the, the yellow and the red are, are dead set as a plan. So he could easily take that red off the table and get it out of the way if he wanted to. Yellow would be difficult to follow and he could land on it and take it to this bottom right. Safety is the choice. And I think it's probably quite a good one because He's left it in a way that, such that I don't think it's possible for Lewis to get this moving towards the pocket. Yeah, and also it's a fairly comfortable one to hit. But yeah, you, it's very that's what hits him once. Exactly, he wants to move it away from the yellow. But if he does hit this red, there's every chance he goes in off. Well, that will do for Hitton Patel. Cue ball in hand, yellow's all free. This will be 3-1 very, very quickly. Hitton will be hoping. A little bit more of the same for Lewis Roberts. He's had three visits to this table where there have been tricky chances. That one was probably the least of the tricky chances. And he's not quite got himself over the line. And when you do that, you just open the table up for your opponent. Yeah, so far in this match, Hitton hasn't had to do a huge amount. He has just had to hold himself together following Lewis Roberts' mistakes. And that, honestly, is the easiest way to win a final. It, it absolutely is. So Hitan's not had to take it away. He had one first visit chance and miscued. Other than that, he's just always mopped up following Lewis's first visit chances. So he'd be thrilled to be 3-1 ahead. 
Still plenty to come from both players, you feel, as they settle into this one. But it is Hitton Patel who restores his two-frame cushion. He leads three frames to one. Welcome back to the Ultimate Pool Pro Series. We've got the Challengers final on your Saturday night viewing. Hitton Patel leads Lewis Roberts by three frames to one. If you're just joining us, Hitton has had second chance in just about every frame. And he's going to have second chance here. Second time in three that he's gone in off the break. Lewis Roberts has made an unfortunate habit of getting away through a finish and turning the table over in a much better place from where he started to his opponent. And that is a habit that he would dearly love to break if he's to take home the 5,000 cash prize and also to pick up a solid chunk of ranking points, which may well catapult him all the way into the professional series next year. Oh, that's awkward. First oh, shot. And that's for a right-hander as well. This is horrible. This is a, a big stretch. The good news is all he has to do is drop it in. So the fact that he's limited on position isn't a problem just has to make the pot give it every chance of dropping in yeah well done he's played that really well that's horrible we talked about that cue action earlier though, and that's when having a really solid technical cue action really helps you isn't it well you've got to be able to reach it as well <laughs> well yeah true yeah good position here Just coming around to double check the eight ball goes comfortably in the corner pocket, uh, in the centre pocket, sorry, and it, it does. Red's not in the way at all. Yeah, and a smooth finish from Lewis Roberts. And a strange old final for Hitton Patel. He still leads by three frames to two, but in a strange way, he f he'll feel like he's not really been in it. No, he all he's done is mop up. Mop up after Lewis either hasn't taken out the first chance. If he has, then he sits in his chair. So it's uh, been a very interesting final so far. Speaking of finals, this is still to come on Free Sports. Sean Storry going for his second main event win in as many weekends. He takes on the golden boy, Gareth Potts, looking to get his maiden Pro Series title. That's still to come at the conclusion of this one. Great final, isn't it? I've talked quite a bit this weekend about the sort of clash of eras with the, some of the old guard, the Gareth Potts, Mick Hills, Chris Mellings, Phil Harrisons, and some of the rising stars in your Shane Thompson's, Declan Brennan's, and Sean Story. And that's exactly what we've got in the final with Sean Story versus Gareth Potts. It really is a mouth-watering match for us to, to watch. Worth pointing out as well, generally speaking, as Lewis makes a couple of balls, generally speaking, the old guard have been turned over in the Pro Series so far. You think no of, question. You think of Michael Hill, Chris Melling, Cole Morris, all have lost in Pro Series finals to some of that younger guy. You Ooh. talk about Shane Thompson, Declan Brennan and Sean Storey. It's well, tonight is, is, is event number seven. The six winners so far, three for Shane, uh, one for Jake McCartney, one for Sean Storey. Um, it, it, they're all part of the new guard. Yeah, Chris Melling's made a couple of finals. Mick Hill, the one. Carl Morris, another one. And now Gareth Potts, the latest member of that sort of golden era. Can you sort of arrest that a little bit? Of course, I missed uh, Declan Brennan out when I was listing the winners so far. So apologies, well, He was Declan. the first one. And he was the first one. Feels like a long time ago now. Great break, this one, from Lewis Roberts. Probably his best break of the match. The chances he had in the first couple of frames were really awkward, really delicate, required really good cue ball control. The last couple have been a bit more wide open, and this is very much in that uh, category. Although it's not ideal, he's he not hit it much closer. He needed to be a little bit straighter, if not low on it, and he's a bit too far the other way. May have to accept bad position, potentially play for the red into the top left hand pocket.
they tried to come round the angles, but that's not worked. He's still got a chance. I think this double still goes. It's very, very tight. He has to get very, very close to the yellow. Well, the fact that he's coming around to have a look at the red to the top, I don't think he, he can make the double. Well, there's your answer. But that is a result. If you're going to miss, miss in a way that makes one of your opponent's balls absolutely horrible. Absolutely. But because he's got the number disadvantage, this is now hit and having to just bide his time, play a couple of safety shots, wait for the right opportunity. Hitting in an ideal world here. Wants to keep as many of his yellows on the table for as long as possible. If the yellow and red that are together were an absolute dead set, unmissable plant to the bottom left-hand corner, he'd play it. If not, it's, a, it's way too risky. Just wonder what the plan is. Yeah, I think that was a case of he'd run out of time and had to pot a ball to, to keep his thinking going. Oh, he's still trying to pot. Normal circumstances, you wouldn't want to take too many off the table if you're planning to play safe eventually. He could play safe here. Maybe but he, he's just waiting for that opportunity to, to use his best location. For me, though, he could have got to this area of the table without potting that previous ball. And if he leaves that other, the ball he's just potted over the bottom left-hand corner, that's a potential ball he can use to go into his problem. Because even if Lewis Roberts fouls in this situation here, all Hitan gets is cue ball in hand. So he doesn't, he doesn't, he has to pick an angle on something to try and develop his bad ball. I think yeah. that's a foul. Yeah, got to hit cushion after contact with your object ball. I mean, that yellow is close to that rail. That must have been a close call. Yeah, not a lot in that at all. Referee Scott Price eagle eyed. It's still not easy, this for Hitson. It really isn't. He's looking to find the angle to break them out now. I think he might have been, but it's not really worked. And the more balls he pots, the more Lewis Roberts is going to have some interest in this frame. Yeah. I think he's got an angle now to screw into it, though. Double, Double kiss, kiss doesn't help him. No. And he is starting to run into a little bit of trouble. It's starting to become an even tactical battle. He needed to keep these balls on the table for me. Just a safety. And for me, this isn't a bad one. And this has been on pretty much the whole way through this frame because he can let Lewis pot this red. Because he's got no hope of, of of winning the frame if he pots the red, because there's just no way to get on his last one. So for me, I feel like Hinton's been a little bit overly aggressive. Yeah, for me, if, I, if I'm Hinton, I wouldn't have wanted to take a ball off the table with his first first uh, safety exchange. You, you've got all your balls on the table. I would have just tried to find a nice safe area of the table and knock a ball into an area where I could play a, a cannon in a, a visit or two's time. And he got two off the table. And then the next visit, he took another two off the table. And all of a sudden, he's in... It's it's almost a 50-50. You, you give Hitton the advantage just because he's got three on the table to Lewis's two. But it's almost been a case of having a safety battle where Hitton's almost approached it quite traditionally where you sort of cover all your bases, you play for snookers. But actually, it, it doesn't matter if, if Lewis can see the ball at the top of the table. It's absolutely not an issue. As long as you don't leave an angle where Lewis could go into that red and yellow that together, you're absolutely right. That was eminently controllable. It's been a strange frame. And it's going to be a really intriguing finish. And at this point in the match, 
this frame just takes on so much of an importance. It's keeping Steve Singh awake in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> so Love. can he knock a ball into a position that he can then open up the red and yellow? See, I like this. I, I like putting a yellow there. If he gets the right angle on that yellow, he can then develop it. He could have got the yellow to a similar, you know, that corner of the table in his first visit. Doesn't really want this to drop. Oh, that's a mistake. Can it, see what Lewis is trying to do, I think. He's trying to leave that hanging in the pocket so the next shot he's got, he can maybe screw out down the rail. Yeah, but even for me, that's not a great choice because the minute you put it right into the pocket, you know next time you go into the table that you've got a sight, you've got to pot it. So I think maybe... And also, if you hit and you just take it straight off the table at the earliest opportunity. Possibly. The one thing maybe he had in his mind is if he put it right over the pocket, in a couple of shots' time, he may have been able to play a three-ball plant, even if that was off the bottom cushion. Hitam would have had to be very, very careful about where he left the cue ball because he could have left some sort of shot where he played the three-ball plant up into the top left corner. Well, I mentioned he's a former snooker pro. That's a snooker shot. <laughs> it is, yes, it is. Yeah. That on a 12-foot table is an unbelievable shot. Yeah, welded to the top cushion. It's a very good shot as well. He's not left hitting an awful lot here. This, this yellow maybe cuts in, but it's so, so thin and doesn't really give him an awful lot of cue ball control to continue to break. Continue the break, I should say. And he's missed it. Has he left it? Has he left it? I don't think he was ever thinking cut. I think it maybe was too thin for me. I think he's just trying to get the cue ball across to the left-hand side of the table, the top part of the table as we look. And he actually caught the yellow a little bit too, too thin to be able to get there. He wanted to be a shade thicker on it. Is Lewis cutting this back? It's very thin. It's either a double or a straight cut to the corner. It is a cut to the corner. Oh, pot. Needs the cue ball to pull up. Needs the cue ball to pull up. Brilliant. Just. That's such a good pot from Lewis Roberts. And this is a frame that's definitely got away from Hitan. It really has. This will hurt. And the eight ball is there from Lewis Roberts. The white is safe. That is a big, big frame to win. Potentially a big frame to lose. For Hit and Patel, what a pot that is under pressure from Lewis Roberts. We are all square in the Challenger Series 7 final. Lewis Roberts is starting to enjoy himself. We're having plenty of fun too. Do stay with us. Ultimate Pool Pro Series action live on your Saturday night here on Free Sports. Hit Mattel will be desperate for a ball here and a good chance to set aside the thought, the ghost of that previous frame. Is he going to make a ball? Yes. Last one in motion. And he'll take that and he'll take this split too. He would just love a, a good, nice break and clearance. What he'd give after what was a an almost confusing tactical battle in the last frame. We were sort of picking the bones out of it for the entirety of that ad break, and we, we're still not too sure I what think was really going on. For me, I think Hitten's just got himself in the mindset of, of old school Paul, where he's thinking, I'm, I've got a bad ball there, I've got to get a foul out of my opponent, and then I'm going to get cue ball in hand and I can do what I want for it. But that's not the way you win tactical battles anymore. You don't get a two shots or a shot and a visit or anything like that you, you have to leave yourself an angle on something to develop your bad ball on your own right and what, as soon as you start taking balls off the table you're limiting your your chances of doing so so there's definitely a tactical exchange that hit has got all wrong but let's take oh as he misses a straight pot to the corner i was just saying let's not take anything away from the way lewis roberts played that frame that last safety shot put Hitan in so much trouble and it wasn't easy to do because Hitan had the numbers advantage. It was very, very classy safety shot. Yeah, trust the former snooker pro to play the snooker <laughs> shot. It was it was beautiful. Hitan's potential saving grace is that yellow has just gone and made that red at the top of the table pretty awkward. Lewis has a key shot in this frame and it will be breaking that red out of the top of the table. He's got a ball. But it's, that's its friend up there, he, he can use that. But he's got to land on the right angle. That's the key to unlocking this frame. 
as was that. It hasn't quite worked. Yeah, there was a problem at the bottom and the problem at the top. He hasn't given the frame away with that shot, though. He's trying to make the, the red off the yellow to open up the pocket for the next red. A lot going on in that shot. It's actually the one he was kissing. He was trying to knock onto the bottom left-hand corner pocket. So a lot going on that for, for Lewis. But that doesn't give the frame away because, OK, the, the one over the bottom left and the one at the top of the table go. The other two don't easily. The one nearest the centre pocket there, you can see it does go, but you've got to land on it. But it's the one underneath his hand now. Real problem ball. And this isn't a good positional shot. Oh, Hitton is in all sorts of trouble here. Is he looking cushion first? Can he still make the pot? Oh, that looked like it might have been red first, yeah. Called by our referee. So, cue ball in hand anywhere on the table, but I suspect he's going to play from behind the the break line anyway, play the one at the top of the table. It's a good chance now for Lewis Roberts, it really is. Clear the two at the top, then come down the table. And we're sort of heading into, into the witching hour, aren't we? Two minutes to go until the 15 second shot clock starts to bite and it will bite. Yeah, and speaking to both players beforehand, they were both fully aware of it, especially Lewis. He was you know, asking him how he was feeling ahead of the final a few hours ago, and he was saying, well, I'm a bit nervous about the shot clock. It was certainly in his mind, probably more than anything else, any, any other aspect of the, the match. I think he's actually handled 30, which he was already tr looking at with a little bit of trepidation. He's handled it really well, actually. But 15 is, a, is an altogether different kettle of fish. I'd probably say there's two or three players maybe in the world who are anywhere close to comfortable on a 15-second shot clock. And yeah. then, then there's the rest. Yeah, and, and, there's a, and nobody is really. Yeah, there's one or two maybe, but the rest are, you know, dread it. The one thing we would say, if you're going into that portion of the match, is if you're in front, it really does help you. You don't want to be chasing when you go into that end portion. Need to bounce, need to bounce. Yeah, that's okay. For a second, I thought he was going to leave it a little bit too far short. Could have done with a couple more rolls, but he's still fine. Eight ball comfortably goes in the right center. Going about these really nicely. Perfect time to lead. talked about a fair bit on Monday nights but it, it it's almost it's almost like that sort of football cliche where just before half time is a good time to score Trish Murphy there Lewis's partner looking pretty pleased also looking still very nervous Trisha was far more nervous than I think Lewis was going into this one but it's uh, it's one of those Simon where leading now heading into easily the most stressful part of the match just puts that little extra degree extra on your opponent, doesn't it? it? No, it really does. Everything gets amplified when you get to this stage of the match. It really does. And especially considering how this match has gone. You know, Lewis off to a slower start. He's had all the chances. There's no doubt about it. He's had all the chances in this match. And now he's taking them. Four three in front. Ten minutes, eighteen seconds left on the clock. He needs two more frames. So we're not guaranteed to have this match finish before the clock runs down. Lewis would certainly like it too. Didn't hit this break as well as previous. Made a ball though, which ultimately is just all you're praying for, isn't it, when you line up to strike it. And there sounds the tone. 
I say the, the break wasn't as good as previous ones. It absolutely wasn't. It didn't open up in the same way. But look at the, the way these yellows are lined up. They're actually lined up in a really nice way, and they actually all connect together really nicely as well. He won't mind. He would have wanted both those to go in. That was absolutely as played. The only thing I would say is he would like to have been on the yellow that he played into, the one he's nearest to now. If he was straight on that to the right centre pocket now, it, the finish would almost be a certainty. Now he does need to find a positional shot from the one middle of the bottom of the table onto that one that's by his hand. Lovely, just rolls it through to make sure he's on it straight to the corner. Really nice, keeping the game straight, natural, simple. Back, you're potting. And this eight ball for two in front at absolutely the right time. Oh, it's never easy. It's never easy. Just when you thought this was all there. Oh, that was close. Any more pace on that, and I'm not sure that stays, well, that goes down the pocket. I think it might stay up. That was a little bit dicey from Lewis Roberts. He looked calm enough. He didn't react to it, but, yeah, that was very, very, uh, very, very close to being a, a touch on the jaw there. But he certainly found, he's found some form at the right time. That was a lovely finish. It really was. Connected it all together beautifully. And Hitan has certainly missed a trick. He felt like he was... Well, he got off to the better start, but you felt like in that tactical battle, he was in control. He's the one that should have won it. And if he wins that one, this match could be very different. Such a huge moment in this match. It really was. Eight minutes 41, though. That is enough time to turn this match around for Hiten. Yeah, there's the good news. It's not loads to go at, but it's... It's some good news. And he's already down. 15 seconds a shot is not long. And he needs some quick finishes here. Good layout here. These actually connect together really well as well. Get rid of the two at the top of the table. If he finishes straight on the one he's leaning over now, he can drop that on, drop that in. It gets him onto the one into the right centre, and that in turn gets him onto the one at the bottom of the table. They do connect up really nicely. And that will do him nicely, just where he wants to be. Just coming round to check his window. This was a big, big visit to the table for his and Patel. Up against it, Lewis Roberts won from home. These needed to go and they have. And full credit to the hitman who stays alive in this Challenger Series final. 5 4, Lewis Roberts leads. He is on the hill and he will have a chance to win it when we come back. Welcome back to the Ultimate Pool Pro Series. We are watching the Challenger Series 7 final. Hitton Patel against Lewis Roberts. Here's Lewis Roberts to break. And he is breaking for the championship. He would love a break the same as his previous one. In fact, his last couple left very good chances. Put a little bit extra into that. Cue ball's in. Cue ball is in. Hit and Patel. Now is your moment to save your skin. Red ball's in play. 
These reds should just about all be there. He's got a little bit of work to do, though, on the right side of the table, Simon. Yeah, one bad ball. Eight ball's not great. You have to be land nicely on it, and there isn't a good ball to land nicely on it. Could get the bad ball out here. That's the plan. Nice shot. Is he on the next ball, though? Oh, it's good news, bad news. He's not the eight ball awkward. He does have another shot on. It's not a nice one, though. Yeah, pot's tough, and the eight ball is, is now tied up. The pot's tough, and also the natural angle's going into the red next to it. And if he takes the one nearest the cushion, it's a much tougher shot. He's trying to he's trying to go into the eight ball here, but this is now dangerous, raising the butt of the queue. Oh, what a shot. Oh, I tell you what, Hitton Patel, what a shot that is. That's brilliant. That really is. And that takes a lot of bottle as well, considering what happened before when he was queuing up a little similarly. Yeah, that's so brave, because if he misses that shot, he's, in his mind, he's thinking that's the championship gone. Oh, and after doing all the hard work, after doing all the hard work, has hit and Patel thrown this match away. Well, it's just a little bit rushed, the beeps were coming. I was just about to say, it almost looked like he rushed it and then arrived at 15 seconds a shot, and he had to rush it because he wasn't in position. The, the timing has definitely caught him out there. He deserved more after the shot before, which was brilliant. So then, Lewis Roberts, here is your chance, and he has missed a good opportunity. I think he gets a bad contact here. I think this skids on him. That's why he certainly said something to Scott Price as he turned around. Watch the cue ball on the yellow. Yeah, I'm not sure that's come off at the correct angle. Oh, hits and He's struggling with that 15 seconds. He sort of just played a shot there just to play a shot. 15 seconds is is really tough when you've got a clear chance and you've just got to get yourself round. But when you're in a tactical battle and, and hit and there didn't have anything to go at, it is really, really tough because you just haven't got time to consider your options and work out what you want to do. It really can get to you. 15 seconds isn't too bad in the position that Lewis is in now because the, the layout, the route, the pattern, it's all... Oh. I was about to say it's all there for him, but he's nearly gone in off. And this is now a very awkward pot into the right centre pocket. It looks comfortable from our camera, but it, it really isn't. He's lucky just to have one. Just feel like... Oh, he's not on the next ball, I don't think. I'm not sure he is. Oh, I mean, that is hanging over the pocket. And yeah, he's, I don't think you can see this. Is he going cushion first into the middle? That's what he's tried. Tried to play the little plant. It's not worked. And Hitton Patel gets a reprieve. Three and a half minutes. Now the match clock comes into play. So Hitton needs to leave himself a good angle on the second red at the bottom here. That is not the good angle he wanted. He can float this in and still give himself a shot, but he didn't want to be hampered queuing. That's close, no. Well then, big Lewis shot Roberts. here. Big, big shot here because now that the red stayed over the pocket, this is huge. He will feel if he misses, it will be Hitens frame. Oh, brilliant. Shot. One more good pot and you feel the match and the title is his. Big shot along the cushion now. <laughs> Trish is struggling, bless her. Few hands on on the shoulder for support, and Lewis Roberts is very nearly there. Won one game in the Challenger Series all year long. Oh, he's just overhit that next one. Now this is this is still missable now. Oh, it's a miscue. Oh wow. Two minutes, 11 left. Hitton Patel with the chance to go and win the frame and set him up for a decider. Oh, and he's so straight on this red that he's not going to be able to get off the cushion. He's going to have an awkward eight ball. It is close enough to the pocket, but there is so much pressure out there. I don't know how these players are feeling. My heart rate's up at the moment. This is crazy. Hitton Patel to stay in the tournament.
Nice. Five all. 1.34-ish on the clock. Oh, this is crazy. And Hitton Patel has the next break, and he's got 90 seconds to go and win the tournament. Yeah, that's an incredible miss from Lewis. And it was the previous shot where he just overran position to the point where it left him on the cushion and left him awkward. I'm still massively surprised he miscued it. But it's amazing what can happen when you put the pressure on these guys at 15 seconds a shot. It can make you do some very strange things out there. Oh, well. Well, well, well. There's no guarantees, by the way, that these get taken out in 90 seconds. And if that's the case, well, Simon, we know what happens. It's six red shootout time. Yeah, I think that's highly likely right now. Hiten's going to have a chance to try and stop that. This is a good, good split. This is the chance you want for a 90 seconds clearance. One minute and 22 seconds for the tournament. Lewis is going to be fearing the worst in his chair now. He knows he's had his opportunity to win this match, to win this tournament. Now this is Hiten's chance. The, the clock isn't that relevant right now. A minute, it sounds like nothing, but 15 seconds a shot. He just needs to pop the balls. He needs to keep the cue ball fairly tight in terms of not letting it run loose, but the time should be fine. This could be it. He's gone about these beautifully under pressure, Hitton Patel. He's gone about them really, really well. This the key shot. 30 seconds to go. He's worked it perfectly. That had a little wobble. This for the match. The Hitman is a Challenger Series champion. Not without its share of drama, Hitton Patel takes down Challenger Series 7. Look what it means to a man who has been around this sport for a very, very long time. Stick with us. The presentations are on their way. Next. Well, a very warm welcome back to the Ultimate Pool Pro Series. What an absolutely epic final we just witnessed out here on the main table. Plenty around us at the moment. Let's hear it for both of our Challenger Series finalists. <laughs> Some run. Lewis Roberts had, he ran the gauntlet for only the third time in the series and he went all the way to the final and very nearly took down the big one. Let's hear it for our runner, Lewis Roberts. Lewis, commiserations. That was, I just want to ask really, what on earth was that match like to be a part of? That was crazy to watch. My heart beats going just watching it. What, what was that like for you? Uh, horrible. <laughs> to be quite simple. Yeah, it was, it, was, uh, it, it was a bit of a struggle or match, I think. But um, congratulations to his and I thought he played a good game. He, he won the key frames at the right time, so I think he deserved to win overall. But nice we took out that chance at the end. But when you get down to 15 seconds, your brain's just going so fast and you don't think straight. And it's... Um, yeah, I've made, you know, should have took them out from there, really, so disappointed with that, but, you know, he's handed over the win, I think, maybe, so, yeah. It's given you the bug for 2022, though, signed up for next year, you'll be back. Yeah, yeah, I'll be back, yeah, it's, you know, it's something to build on, um, keep, I'll keep putting the practice in now, hopefully, and if I, yeah, if I, I think if I play like that, hopefully I'll, I'll do okay, so, um, yeah, just got to try and, try and come back and hopefully get the win this time, so. No doubt about this, congratulations, a great final. <laughs> Well, Hitton Patel has been all the way through us with the Challenger Series. He's been in every single event, no further than the last 16 so far. And then in Series 7, he has run the gauntlet and he's done so quite beautifully. Let's hear it for your champion. He's Hitton Patel. <laughs> Hitton, that was extraordinary. I, I'll start with the same question I just asked Lewis. What on earth was that like to play? And it, it looked like yeah. murder for you. Yeah, it was difficult, to be honest. Um... Well, I'd lost our knife, apart from that last miscue, but um, fair play to um, Lewis. Great game. And he went ahead. I thought I was, I was doing all right at the start, but he's come back and he's gone ahead 5-3. I'm under pressure then. How, how, how well have you done in that last frame, just to hold it together with that final chance? 
Yeah, they come out nice, and I was just glad really to get the chance at the end. I was going to run down the clock first, my first thoughts were, but when they come out, so I thought, I've got to go for these now, and they come out nice, yeah, I was grateful. Well, when I spoke to you earlier, you told me that you looked at this tournament, looked at the rankings beforehand, and thought, I'm probably going to have to win an event to get, to get pro status. You didn't really give yourself much of a shot. Here you are now as, yeah. as the Challenger Series winner. How does that feel? Great, to be honest. As I said, yeah, I'd about to win the tournament to come pro next year. I didn't think I'd be here, to be honest, standing here, but yeah, it's nice to win it and come up roll on the pros next year, yeah. Well, roll on the pros indeed and roll on the trophy as well. It's time for the presentation. I'll bring in Lee Kendall, Chief Executive of Ultimate Pool, to prevent, present the Challenger Series 7 trophy. Your winner is the Hitman, Hitton Patel.